Okay, well, we were all newborn babies at one point. Newborn babies have all of the muscles and all of the nerves, nervous system um, uh, organs as adults do. So just the newborn baby, it has the same, all the same muscles you do as, a, as an adult. You know, it has a, I, don't know, I won't name them all, but a frontalis and a quadriceps group and a hamstrings group, pectoralis majors, biceps brachii, triceps brachii, all those muscles that we talked about. Babies have, newborn babies have them all. And they have all the nerves to control those muscles. Remember, your muscles contract and relax in response to signals from your nervous system. So baby's got all those nerves. So you might want, wonder, well, why can't babies do the things we do like, that you involve control of our muscles? Why can't they walk around and pick up objects in a coordinated way? And the short answer is they just haven't learned how to do those things. Uh, even what we consider the simplest movement, like if I want to reach out and pick up this, this tape dispenser right here, that involves a lot of coordinated muscle contractions and, and, and relaxations. Uh, and the only reason it seems simple to us is that we learned it so long ago we forgot how difficult it was. So yeah, babies, they, they take several years to learn how to use their muscular systems in a coordinated way. Um, that's, that's why they're not very able to do many physical things for, for the first few years of their life. Okay, uh, anyway, so we're all born as, as these newborn babies. Um, and then over time, of course, we grow and our muscles, uh, part of that growth is that our muscles get larger and stronger. Um, not always, but generally, males tend to end, end up with larger and stronger muscles than females. And the reason why that is, is testosterone. Testosterone is a hormone. It's sometimes called the male hormone because it's primarily produced in the testes, in the male gonads. Um, and one of the effects of testosterone is it makes muscles grow uh, larger and stronger. So thanks to the larger amounts of testosterone in males, that's why their muscles tend to get a little bit larger. Um, a kind of related subject, sometimes you hear about uh, athletes like football players and baseball players and whatnot getting in trouble for taking things called anabolic steroids, or sometimes just, they, they just call them steroids sometimes, uh, or performance-enhancing performance, per, performance enhancing drugs, I've also heard them called. Um, so what that is is synthetic testosterone. These, uh, these athletes sometimes take it, uh, synthetic testosterone, because they want to do better at their sports, and, and making their muscles bigger and stronger will oftentimes do that. Um, but the taking of, of the synthetic testosterone is banned, as far as I know, in pretty much every, every major sport because um, it has some health consequences. What they found is people who take large amounts of these anabolic steroids have higher rates of, of liver cancer, and they think it might be also um, related to outbursts of uh, aggressive behavior. Oops. Um, sometimes called roid rage. Uh, people who take large amounts of the, of the synthetic testosterone can very easily get angry and sometimes like physically uh, attack other people, which may be what's going on uh, in that picture right there. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, because of the dangers, the, uh, the uh, taking synthetic testosterone is, is banned in most sports. All right. Um, your, uh, your muscles, if you don't use them, uh, will automatically get smaller and weaker. So it's sort of a use it or lose it type thing for muscles. Um, so my, my public service announcement today is you should have an exercise regime that you do, uh, do on a, hopefully a daily basis, but at least several times a week. Because if you don't, the muscles that you have are just going to atrophy uh, because because through, through disuse. That that's almost the way they're programmed, just to naturally get s smaller and weaker if you're not using them. And incidentally, um, that is why in hospital settings, they try to get the patient up and walking up and down the hallways as quickly as they can after surgery because they don't want the patient's muscles to atrophy. Um, my mother-in-law had a, a surgery recently and it seems that she was just in the recovery bed 
for like a day, and then as soon as possible they got her up on with like a walker and were ha have her doing laps up and down the hallway. That's why if they just allow her, allowed her to sit in bed for days after day after day, uh, her muscles would start atrophying for uh, be because of non-use. All right, and um, I'll mention also the effect of aging on muscles. Uh, as we get into our senior years, we lose muscle cells. Muscle cells just tend to die off as you get into your se senior years. And the muscle cells that die off get replaced by connective tissue, which is like a leathery tissue. But, you know, the, the connective tissue doesn't generate any, any force, so it's not anything that keeps your muscles strong. Uh, so, so another way of saying the same thing is you're going to get weaker as you get older. I mean, just kind of a fact of life that you lose muscle cells a as you get into your senior years. Um, so I think it's kind of interesting uh, that, you know, we, we start off as newborn babies with our muscles aren't very strong at that point. And then as we grow, our muscles get bigger and stronger. But then as we life goes on, we get into our senior years, our muscles get a little bit weaker. So you might be curious, well, at what age are people physically their strongest? When are they at the peak of their physical strength? Um, well, I'm not an expert in, in that field. That you, I guess you'd have to ask an exercised physiologist. But from what little research I did uh, on this, and when I say research, I mean I was, I was Googling it, it seemed to say that generally in people's mid-20s is when they're at their physical strongest. Um, and it, it seems to vary by the type of exercise the person is doing. Like if you're uh, an endurance athlete where you may play soccer or run or something for several hours, you, you, you reach your physical peak at a different age than athletes who more use you know, powerful muscles for short bursts of, of very intense exercise. Uh, they tend to reach their physical peak at a slightly different age. And I'd also say that uh, like sports that involve a lot of hand-eye coordination, like tennis or, or, or ping pong or something like that, uh, athletes in those sports tend to peak at different um, ages than others. But in terms of actual muscle strength, generally sometime in your mid-20s is when you'll reach your, your maximum muscle strength. And then uh, after that, you know, there'll be a very slow decline over time um, um, as, you're, as you're losing some muscle cells. So I guess the, the bad news of all that is that uh, you have to sort of accept the fact that you're going to be weaker as you get older, as you get into your senior years. Um, but what they found is a good part of the reason why seniors tend to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for, debilitated, like not physically strong, is they're just not exercising as much as when they did when they were younger. So yes, through aging you are going to get weaker, but you also get weaker because you don't exercise. So again, my public service announcement is adopt an exercise routine and try to do it throughout your entire life. You'll, you'll still get weaker as you get into your senior years, but you won't get that much weaker when you get into your senior years. Whereas, whereas if you just sort of give up exercise and activities, you'll get a lot weaker in your senior years. Okay, well, in this part of the lecture outline, I was trying to discuss the development and, and how strong our muscles are at various points in our lifespan. Um, I'm going to switch gears slightly now and talk about disorders, diseases of the muscular system, which you know just are, are not part of the normal um, uh, workings of our muscles throughout our lifespan. Well, so uh, what I call here degenerative muscle disorders, I list two, Duchenne muscular dystrophy and myasthenia gravis. Um, Duchenne muscular dystrophy is um, uh, a disease that causes the muscles to degenerate. Um, the, the 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 people who have it, uh, it usually shows up in their in their early teens is when they start to have symptoms, and ultimately it kills them. Even with medical treatment, um, there is no cure for it, and the kids who have it uh, die in their late teens or early twenties of it. They. They know exactly 
what's wrong with uh, what's going wrong in the body for these people who have this uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Uh, there's a certain protein inside muscle cells that their body's not able to make. And because the muscle cells are missing that particular protein, uh, the muscle cells will start to de degenerate over time. And as I said, they, by early teens, they're showing muscle weakness, and uh, they die of it uh, typically by uh, somewhere in, in their 20s. Um, the other muscular... Um, disorder I want to talk about is called myasthenia gravis. And in myasthenia gravis, it's not that the muscles themselves are degenerating. Uh, it's that the nervous system's ability to control the muscles is, is what's degenerating. Um, w remember that your muscles are controlled by your nervous system. And so the junction, the, 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 the interface where the nerves are passing the signals onto their muscles, that's what is uh, not working right. I mean, these people have myasthenia gravis. And so they, they're slowly their ability to send signals to their muscles, to contract their muscles, just starts to decrease over time. And for some reason, and I don't really know why, it's the facial muscles where this disease starts to show up first. So people who have myasthenia gravis, their, the corners of their mouth start to droop down, and the corners of their eyes start to droop down as they slowly lose the ability to, to contract those muscles. And then other muscles in their body also start to, they start to lose the ability to contract. Um, there's no cure for it, but there are some medicines that can, uh, that can slow it down. And so my understanding is if people are taking these medicines, um, it, it does not significantly shorten their, their natural lifespan, although it, it does um, uh, cause them to, to uh, have decreased ability to contract some of their muscles. All right. Oh, uh, maybe I should mention there, in the lecture handout, I said it is a uh, neuromuscular. Uh, so that just means, as I was saying, where the muscles have a junction with, with the, where the nerves have a, uh, a junction with the muscles, is your neuromuscular junctions. Um, and autoimmune diseases are where the body's immune system attacks some part of the body. You know, the immune system is supposed to when it, uh, be fighting off um, pathogens, things like bacteria and viruses that have infected the body. But Rarely, the immune system makes a mistake and starts attacking the body's own tissues, and we call that a, an autoimmune disease. Okay, uh, well, that might be just about the end of our muscle lecture. Any questions on anything in the muscle lecture?